I'm in the field, gotta tie my laces Me and my wife on a last name basis When I get home, I'ma run the bases Yeah, now I'm all tied like Mavis No shame, baby, you know I'm shameless Thank God that I'm in his good graces And he never took a loss like Vegas What a Batman, what a been Baneless Ooh, never really thought about it like that Guess the story isn't good unless you got a little bad Mind a league up in this thing, that's why the M is on that hat like that yeah, seeking you fine. Uh -huh. Don't happen overnight. Yeah, needed some time. time. With the OGs, I don't see them around. Yeah, yeah. Where the father's at, blind, leading the blind. I'm talking wobble wobble. Talking shake it, shake it. Yeah, drop it, drop it. Yeah. Talk it, take it, take it. Hey. When you grow up on that, tell me what you're gonna think about women every time they walk past. It's what it is. Okay. It is what it is. Live and let live. Hey, my mama told me this. Hey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know I'm a hoot when I'm in New York. Holla ass suit, gotta get scoop. Ayy, down on 162, got the Holy Ghost with me. I can never be spooked. Me and my, me and my, Aunt Mary Ann, coffee and Italian cookies. Talking how I was a bad kid, I need a whoopers. Shot the trauma and the teachers, cause they always push me. Thought I'd be in jail, a bookie, not a car to book me. so quickly it feels like I haven't seen you guys in forever the Christmas party feels like it was so long ago but it's so great that you're here so make sure you are in the live chat right now so that we can chat with you and just have a great evening together and for me to know that you're there comment right now are you more of a Christmas lunch or a Christmas dinner person do you do you eat Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner my family personally eats Christmas lunch. I can't imagine eating Christmas dinner. And if you eat both, I admire you. I'm, I'm actually shocked. Also a little bit scared, but I'm shocked. <laughs> but I hope you have an amazing night. We've got a brand new series starting tonight called The Future Is Bright. And we've got so many things in store. You don't want to miss it. So I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, it's your boy Roy, although that's like cliche to say, but yeah, it's me. My name's Roy, um, and I'm gonna be playing poorly explained movies. So let's get right into it. All right, cool. So number one, skinny kid takes steroids and fights Nazis with a frisbee and he's I actually don't remember this film fights Nazis with a frisbee a frisbee though like when I was like I'm just thinking fights Nazis so it has to be like one of them war films isn't it is it 1917 or 1942 or something that came out maybe those are both films um I feel like it's something like that 
but like a frisbee though. I'll just say like 1942. Let's just go with that. What? Captain America? Oh my days. Wait, wait. Oh, so that's how we're playing. Okay. With a frisbee. Aha, uh -huh. I see it now. I can't believe that's what we're doing, but cool. Alright, on to the next one, on to the next one. Hopefully, I get this one. Alright, guy spends day telling people stories related to chocolate. Um, wait, 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 wait. What's it? Is it like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or like Willy Wonka or something? Willy Wonka, some. I think it's like Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Or is it Charlie? Maybe it's Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has to be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you like, Because. Yeah, I think it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I think it's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Forrest Gump? I've watched the film. I've watched Forrest Gump. But I don't remember him talking. Oh, wait! Yo, I actually think I like I, I just as I said I don't remember him talking to anyone about chocolate. I think I remember him like a scene a scene of him like selling it. If that even's how it goes. But I just remember like Forrest Gump, like he was jumping on like a big bouncy castle or something. That's like the scene that sticks out in my hand in my head. <laughs> That's the thing. Oh alright, next one. Farmer has to save the earth but ends up in a different dimension. Oh, farmer has to save the earth and ends up in a different dimension. What films are there about farmers though? Like, I don't know any like films of farmers. Or even that many films where they go in different dimensions. Like, I'm thinking superhero film because of that. But who's a farmer though? Oh, let's go with Avengers Infinity War. Uh, sure, why not? Um, we'll see, figure crossed. Interstellar. I've actually not seen that film. And that's probably why I don't remember any farmers in films. But we knew. Well, maybe I'll watch it. Maybe that's going to inspire me to watch it if I ever want to see a farmer end up in a different dimension. Alright, but on to the next one. So, a dude teams up with a bunch of the same dude to fight a big fat bold dude like this has to be like a spider-man film like in my head i know because i feel like or like batman because you know how like batman has the different suits like well in the lego in the lego games you can play like you can play as all the different batmans i'm a super actually let me not say i'm a superhero nerd i used to be like a proper superhero nerd now i'm like you get me so Oh, um, the the one with the sunflower song, uh, sunflower. What's that one? What's that one? Um, Spider Man into Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That is it. Yeah. Cause I remember there was the pink one. I just really remember the pink and white one. But yeah, that has to be it. Spider Man. Woo! Bow. Yeah, Spider Man into Spider Verse. Come on, let's go, guys. Local law enforcement deals with a with a high tech new replacement. New replacement for what? What are we replacing? I don't know. Local law deals with like high tech. What is that like Ben 10? I'm, what you, I'm just thinking high tech now, Ben, but that's not a film. That's not a movie. Uh, well, actually, there is a couple, but no one knows those. Uh, um, now, Ben 10 is just in my head. I'm just playing this theme song. But I right, onto the game, onto the game. You know, let's just get Ben 10 because Ben 10 will not leave me alone. He's saying, Roy, please say me, say me. All right, cool. I'm just going to say Ben 10. Toy Story. What? Wait, I don't recall law enforcement being involved in Toy Story. Like, I've watched Toy Story, but I don't remember that. Like, well, you had, like I genuinely don't like... But to be honest, I don't really remember any scenes from Toy Story. I only remember like the Toy Story I remember the most is like Toy Story 3 with the big purple bear. Oh, he was so evil, man. <laughs> on to the next one. Man uses insects to break into places. Now see, this got me thinking of Spider-Man as well because I watched Spider-Man Homecoming yeah, and he used bugs and that, but like that they didn't help him break in. But I know this is like a superhero thing because like what else could it be? Bugs that break into places. 
Mm. What likes? So obviously they're like small. Things that are like small gate. Ant Man. Ant Man. Yeah, I think it's Ant Man. I think I can't really think of anything else. It like, but it should be Ant Man. Woo! Yes, yeah, Ant Man. I remember like going to see that in cinema, like with my friends from school when I'm, it must have been like end of year seven we went back to see Ant-Man that was a good day man quick story quick story time um all right next one everything in this movie would be annoying to step on that's the lego movie that is the lego movie like come on like i know that one lego movie all day every day boom lego movie let's go i will okay cool so now we got a kid beats up his girlfriend's dad to save the world. Now this it has like I'm thinking Spider-Man Homecoming. Cause like I watched it recently, so that's in my head. That's the one I'm thinking of. Like it should be Homecoming. But I don't know, like. No, it has to be Homecoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be Homecoming. I can't really think of any other films, even though that's probably happened before, but. It's like, if there was any film, like, where they go beat up their girlfriend's dad, it's always like Spider-Man, I feel like. Spider-Man is the only one really beating up his girlfriend's dads in that, like, all the other superheroes, they just beat up regular villains, but Spider-Man seems to like villains' daughters. But yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming, that was my final answer. And Spider-Man Homecoming, let's go. Alright, cool. So, now we got... A kid uses an inflatable toy to avenge his brother's death. <sighs> so it got to be something with brothers, right? Something with brothers, but... Inflatable toy and kid. Of course a kid would use inflatable toys, but I don't know. How would that avenge his brother's death? This kid seems a bit silly because how does that avenge someone's death? How, how does that even happen? Anyway, sidetrack. The only two like brothers I can think of are like Thor and Loki. What film is they like? Let's just say Thor, because I was thinking, what film is even this? Let's just say Thor. What is it? Big Hero Six. To be honest, I don't think I've really watched that film. Like I've seen clips and that, but I never really watched it in depth. Hairy man kidnaps a kid and enrolls him in a school of fairy tales. Now I'm thinking Harry Potter. It has to be Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter just jumps to me. But, and I think it's the first film as well, but I don't remember what the name is. I think it's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Cause like in year six year, we used to get Kindles in it to read the books. And I remember it was my turn to get the Kindle. And like the only thing they had on there, well maybe they had other stuff, but the only thing I remember was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So I think that is the answer. So I'm gonna say Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That counts. I don't care. That counts. Because I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got five out of six words correct. So that counts. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. You know me. Alright, and we're on to the next one. Um two workers make a mistake that induces worldwide terror but ends up solving its own problem. Oh, I feel like I should know this. Like I feel like I should know this. Um, Transformers is something that's jumped into my head right now. I think Transformers along those lines. I don't know. Uh, um, should we just say Transformers? Because like, what it ends up solving its own problem? So what is bad and then like, not bad? I don't know, man. Uh, Transformers. Wait, so it's Monsters Inc. Oh, I do remember like they made a mistake. They made like some sort of mistake. I don't really remember how it solved itself though. I don't remember the end of the movie, but I do remember like they made a mistake and then that's how they got like kicked out of the place and then they had to start checking through snow and all that. I'm very, I think I have a very bad memory. I don't really remember these films in depth. I feel like I should go watch them now, just relive my childhood again, and maybe I'll get 100%. Ah, uh, but it's okay. All right, 
and that was poorly explained movies with me Roy. thank you guys peace tonight we've got a segment called mildly infuriating i've i've got some pictures i've got some videos that i would like you guys to rate on a scale from one to ten one being like mm, it wasn't that bad and 10 being it was the most infuriating frustrating thing i've ever seen in my life so we're gonna start off with the first one my toothpaste that my dentist gave me almost a month ago my parents toothpaste only a few days out of the box how do you survive with toothpaste just like splattered all on the lid like that I feel like that's a solid like seven or eight, but let me know what you guys think. Does this frustrate you? Does your toothpaste look like this? If it does, I'm worried. <laughs> so let me know, what would you rate that one? The next one is a video that's literally titled no, just no. Oh. Maniac. Listen, some of them I can deal with, but wet socks and getting the cuffs of your sleeves like wet I cannot deal with it. Why are people like this? I give it a solid like nine or 10, just for those two. Just for those two, but let me know down below what you guys think. Do you think this is infuriating? Are you thinking that I'm crazy and that this is not infuriated at all? Let me know. And if you don't find this infuriating, I worry. Okay, the next one is this Rubik's Cube my brother gave my dad for Christmas. So let's let's watch that. Oh, wait. Wait, so if you solve it, you never actually solve it because... I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of funny. <laughs> like, it's kind of infuriating for the person who has to do it, but... On the outside, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Let me know, does this infuriate you? Do you want a Rubik's Cube like this? I feel like I want to give that as a gift to someone. Just because. <laughs> and the last one's a photo. Oh, oh, it's, it's where you've like gone to rip something open, like a package. You know when you get a good Amazon package and you go to rip it open and then it like tears off and you can't rip it open with the little tab? <sighs> it's a sad moment. It's a sad, sad moment. I think I give that one a solid five. Like it's, it's frustrating, but it's also not like infuriating, you know? I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you're not too infuriated for the rest of you. <laughs> but enjoy the rest of the night.
even when the fight comes, I'ma keep my head up. Hey, you won't let me down, let me down. Meet me in the middle, middle of my battle. Hey, you will never be the one to walk away. Fight comes, I'ma keep my head up. If I were you, I would have given up on me by now I would have labeled me a lost cause Cause I feel just like a lost cause If I were you, I would have turned around and walked away I would have labeled me beyond repair Cause I feel like I'm beyond repair Oh, but somehow you don't see me like I do Somehow you're still here You're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing Every time I thought I let you down Always thought I had to earn my way But I'm learning you don't work that way no. Cause somehow you don't see me like I do Somehow you're still here You're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction when the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With a wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever done Could separate my heart from the God who stands My shame can't separate my guilt Can't separate my past What do you think of when you hear the word hope? Do you think of like different things that you kind of wish for, like, you know, 
maybe you're there and you're like, oh, I hope that when I take my exam, I'm going to get a good result. Maybe you think that for some of you older guys, it's like, oh, I hope that when I take my driving test, that I pass. Um, maybe for some of you guys that are, you know, kind of like chatting to some other people, maybe you're just like, I just, I hope that he or or she would just text me back. If if they'd just reply, then then I hope that they'd just text me back. You know, maybe you think of one of those things when you think of the word hope. Um, it's funny, I think a lot of the time when we talk about hope, I think we, we, we get it mixed up with wishful thinking. And we think that hope and, and wishful thinking are often, um, you know, the same thing. Uh, you know, things that we would like to happen and things that we wish would happen, even if we wish it with all of our heart. Like when I was younger, I used to wish, I, there was this game that I remember, I can't remember where I played it first. It was a great, it was, it was a game. I'm not gonna say it was a great game, right? It was called Tekken 3. And and it was like it was like the game that I needed to play. I played it once and I was absolutely hooked. And then from then on out, I was like wishing day in, day out that I could get this game. Every time we went to the city centre with my parents, I was like wishing that, that they'd kind of like get it for me. Every time it was Christmas or my birthday, I would always ask for this game because I was like wishing that I could get it. Honestly, I was I wanted it so bad and um and it was kind of like the more that I wanted and the stronger that my desire was for this game, it felt like the, the more I kind of hoped that I would get it. When I think about where, um, you know, my hope was kind of like built and what it was built on, it was, it was built on that desire for the outcome to come about rather than the actual likelihood of it actually happening. It was like the more that I wanted it, the more I kind of hoped it would happen rather than actually looking and seeing how likely is it that I'm actually going to get this and then basing my hope on that. Um, and it's funny, like when we look in the Bible, and we look at scripture, I think scripture paints a completely different picture of what hope is. You see, in scripture, hope isn't wishful thinking, but hope is a strong belief, a strong belief, not wishful thinking. And so over this next few weeks, we're going to look at hope um, over this series called The Future Is Bright, which I'm really excited to do. But before we get into that, let me start by asking you quite a difficult question. Do you have a plan for your life? Um, even if it's just a, a dream of what you think it would like to look like or what you'd like it to look like. You see, tonight we're gonna um, talk all about how God has a plan for your future. Uh, and, uh, and, and I believe that the Bible is going to show us and it's going to show you tonight that actually we've got a lot to hope for when we think about what our future looks like. You've got a lot to hope for when you think about and you hear what God says about your future. Now in Jeremiah 29 verse 10 to verse 14, um, it says this. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all of the nations and the places where I banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. God was telling his people that he had a great plan for them, a great plan, even while they were in captivity. Now, if you wonder what captivity means, it basically means that that you're slaves. It's like you've been taken from your own uh, country or your own place where you live to a, a different place. And basically you're owned then by, by the people that have taken you. And so even while they were captives, even while they were slaves to these other people, God still had a plan for them. See, God's plan for his people was that they would endure these difficult times that they were going through, this, this difficult situation that they found themselves in, that they would endure it and persevere throughout it. And then as they did that, they would pursue him and pursue his plan individually for each one of their lives. And they said that when you do that, your future will be bright. He, he promised them that their future would be bright. Now you might even today be 
facing a, a hard situation. It might not be in captivity, but you might be in captive in a, in a, in a different sense, in an emotional sense. Um, you might be facing all, any number of kind of difficult situations. Um, and, and I believe that this is the perfect time to kind of hear directly from God that he has a plan for you. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it says this, but as it is written in the scriptures, no one has ever seen this and no one has ever heard about it. No one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Wow, what an incredible promise. Uh, we can't even imagine and wrap our heads around the plan that God has for each one of us. I know we're all guilty sometimes of trying to kind of build our own plan for our life and trying to do things that we think is best rather than first consulting God and asking God who made us, God, what's best? What's your plan for my life? What would you have me do? But you see, the good news is like God doesn't say you need to have every detail of your life figured out and everything planned out before you can start living for me. No, he says simply just to trust me and trust my direction in your life and your future will be bright. Romans 15 verse 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm often as guilty as the next person for sometimes asking and praying that God would give me hope from all of these kind of other places, uh, rather than seeing that actually the gift of hope comes from God himself. He is the source of hope. And when we're looking for hope, if we look for it in all of these other places, um, we're going to end up with nothing because really they can't give us hope like God can. And it's not that God's given us hope through these things. No, God gives us hope through himself. And when we find that and we find that hope is found in him, that's when we experience joy and we experience peace in our lives. And if we look back at this verse in Romans, we see that the challenge is right there in the middle when it says this, as you trust him as you trust in him. That's where the challenge is right there. You know, this takes intentional trusting. It doesn't just come about on its own. It takes switching on our minds and our hearts and thinking, no, I'm going to choose to trust you, God. It has nothing to do with us and it, instead it has everything to do with him. He is the source of hope. That's where we find it. You know, you don't have to work harder in yourself to, to experience it. No, it just takes trusting him. That's what it says. As you trust him, these things will happen. This is a perspective shift that completely changes the way that we engage with God, the way that we live our lives, even the way that we pray to God. We should trust God as the source of hope. You see, when we do that, we're not kind of like wishfully thinking and just because we've got a strong desire, that's why we hope. No, but we're, our hope is built on the fact that when God says something, it will come to pass. And so we know for certainty that we have a strong belief that something is going to happen. And then that's where you find hope, because I know that this is going to happen because God said it's going to happen and because this hope is found in God. So tonight is uh, as we wrap up, you know, you might be finding yourself in a, in, a, in a hopeless situation or you might be feeling great at the moment. But the challenge to all of us is clear. And that's, are we going to trust God as the source of our hope rather than looking for that source anywhere else? Trust God as the source of our hope instead of asking for God to give us hope from anywhere else. Why not ask him for more of his presence in our life, more of his life filling up our life tonight? Hope, peace and joy are available to you as you intentionally trust him, as you choose to trust him and his plan for your life. This is incredible. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, dig a bit deeper and we're going to just chat through some questions that are going to be on the screen. And so I'd love for you to be on the live chat to be discussing, to put in your thoughts. If you see something that you like that somebody else puts, then why not respond back? If you've got questions, then put it there and let's have some discussion over these questions just for the last few minutes.
That was such an incredible night. I hope you enjoyed it. It was so great that you were here tonight, but unfortunately, Fuse is over again for another week. How do we, I feel like Fuse goes so quickly, but we'll see you guys next week on Instagram Live, next week, Friday, 7.30 PM. We can't wait to see you. And until then, stay safe and try not to get too infuriated with wet sleeves that's just my my tip for the night <laughs> but bye guys hope to see you again soon